Hey, what's going on, everybody? Special guest here. It's Ben Moore, covers Georgia State for Panther Talk and the 24 Sports Network. We're going to talk about new Miami transfer commit here, defensive lineman Thomas Gore. What's going on, Ben? Yeah, man. Appreciate you having me, brother. I'm uh, good, good, glad to glad to catch up and, and uh, obviously talk about uh, about Thomas's commitment. Yeah, we're going to go through, you know, his strengths as a player, but just immediately, you just said it just a second ago off camera, just said it's going to be a big loss for Georgia State. What kind of players am I getting? Essentially kind of wrap this thing up. Uh, what, what kind of player is Thomas? Has he been uh, there for the Panthers? Yeah, he, he's not a guy that's going to get off the bus first and really scare anybody, right? You know, he's he's a little bit undersized defensive lineman, uh, but just super gritty kid, really. Uh, coming out of high school, he's from the state of Tennessee. Uh, didn't have a ton of offers, mostly FCS interest, um, and 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 uh, the Panthers run. Uh, three, four, kind of attacking there. They want some guys that are faster uh, up front. Uh, look, so they're not going to go get 310, 315 pound guys. Really, you're not going to get that a whole lot of times with a lot of quality at the group of five level. Um, so they're looking for guys that can move. Uh, Thomas Gore is very athletic, guy that can get out in space, get in the backfield, and really as that three, four nose guard uh, to really kind of take on that center guard position, free up the linebackers to really make plays, uh, you know, out in space, left and right being able to attack the middle um and and he's made comments uh you know over the course of the last few weeks if you if you've kind of followed his recruiting process where they've talked specifically um, about him wanting to kind of play that defensive tackle role in a 4-3 you know looking to kind of mix it up and change his role there um and and, and he's been extremely productive um at the at, at Georgia State um, I, I could argue probably one of the best players uh in the Sun Belt truly on the defensive side of the football uh, if you follow any of the metrics, basically pro football focus or anything like that, they grade extremely high. Um, as he was actually, I believe, in 2021, uh, graded as the their highest rated interior lineman in the country. And that's just not Group of Five or Sun Belt or or anything like that. Um, that's that's including players from the University of Georgia and Clemson and Alabama. So he's had a tremendous uh, you know, two two past two seasons, and, and he's been really really strong. Yeah, speak, let's stay on those metrics there. Again, 2021, his pro football focus rating, 90.2, follows it up this past season, 84.6. The highest guy, you touched on what, what he did in 21, but again, Georgia State's highest rated guy there this past season, 38 tackles, eight for a loss, five sacks, two forced fumbles. The tackles for loss and, and sacks, that's what stands out to me over his career. Just kind of, again, watching from afar, seeing a little bit of his highlight package and, and looking at his stats. So it's 22 tackles for loss, 11 sacks right there up front at that nose guard spot. You know, you, you touched on, again, listen, six foot 270, you touched on size, strength, power, kind of at that spot. What what's made him be uh, so effective, uh, essentially to be able to be that productive, whether it's the analytics or the counting stats that, that we touched on there, and nearly a hundred tackles as well. Yeah, and and that's the biggest thing ultimately. Taking on double teams as well, right? You're taking on the guard, you're taking on the center there, the nose guard position. I laugh constantly because it's not a sexy position, right? You're not gonna you're not gonna be out in space. You're not gonna make huge hits necessarily because you're gonna be you know, using your hands, using your leverage uh, to try to get out there. Um, but he's he's really uh, has been, especially on the group of five level, and even playing up. You know, you've seen him play against power five competitions and and play really really well um, and, and use his use his size and speed very slippery, uses his hands extremely well, um, knows how to kind of utilize his leverage. You, know, you look at taller defensive linemen kind of can get caught up, um, but really, really, you know, finding ways to go up against the larger offensive linemen, find that space, being able to use kind of a variety of moves. And, and really, he's he seemed to really add something every single season, um, you know, in, in his career, trying to add something uh, stronger as he's continued to get a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, a little bit faster. But I've uh, been really, really impressed uh, with with his ability to just not get blown back. When you look at him, uh, ultimately, hey, undersized defensive lineman, you know, uh, not too many offensive coordinators probably looking at him and saying, hey, we, we, we're going to have trouble with that nose guard over there. But fundamentally and technically, he's extremely sound, um, and, and he's a guy that knows how to use his his height and weight uh, to his advantage and, and really, really uh, cause some havoc there. And, and there's many times where you look up and, and he's constantly around the backfield um, and, and honestly having opportunities to, to make sacks in the backfield as well. You touch on the leverage, the hands, you know, the size, strength, power kind of it just it's necessary to, to be at that that position, the toughness as well. 
Ben, is there things with Thomas you, you touched on? I, I'm curious maybe if there's anything that stood out um, as he has had some sample sizes against small sample against some of these uh, better conference teams, the South Carolina, North Carolina. Is there anything with that in this past season that stood out to you and maybe how he performed? Because that will be, you know, a step up in competition regularly week in and week out as he's now in the ACC. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, and, and you know, the challenge gets a whole lot tougher, right? You're 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 playing Power Five teams every single week, not just a week week or two uh, in the last few years. But I, I was impressed with how he played against Auburn last year in 2021. Uh, really held his own. Did did not look out of place at all on the defensive line. You know, facing an SEC offensive line um, this year again the same way. North Carolina's offense, uh, which was very prolific, obviously Drake May uh, made him extremely uncomfortable in uh, in week two. Uh, got got to the backfield, and that's the other side too. That you know, you look some of these these situations where they're not necessarily tackles for loss or even sacks but pressures you're getting a lot of pressure from a nose guard position um you're doing a lot a lot and and that obviously frees things up allows the cornerbacks defensive backs and and, and linebackers to really uh, get free and, and he really enjoys that he, he's not afraid of taking on contact he's tough as nails and, and a gritty gritty kid you know a, a guy that's 22 years old been in college four years um and you, I'm curious, maybe your thoughts on he wants to play, like you said, he wants to kind of make this transition to a different spot and obviously a, a level up. W what's your take on that? Um, essentially, is he ready? Does he, how do you feel like maybe his future goes um, with that? And maybe the transition, what do you kind of envision? Um, essentially, is he ready, you know, with, with what he's done so far in his college career? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, he's he's played exceptionally well at the group of five level. I know, obviously, as we mentioned, um, the step up in competition, you know, level of talent, of course, uh, opposing offensive line and, and and coaching and things that way. But um, you know, I I think I'm interested to see too playing in you know in, in an even front, you know, where he can have that opportunity to play off where he's not going to have uh, you know really have to take on two guys and and you know really free things up for the linebackers. If he has that one-on-one -on -one matchups, had just how skilled he is, and, and he's kind of continued to add to his game and, and go that way. And of course, every single kid that we talk to over the course of probably our entire time uh, covering games, they want to play the NFL, right? They want you know quality film, not just in a bowl game, not just again a, a one game or two game sample against a Power Five program. They want to continue to elevate and show, hey, look. Um, you know, they can they not, hey, be graded great by power, you know, pro football focus and other metric sites, uh, but really have an opportunity to say, look, you know, I performed well in the ACC. I'm ready to take the next step in the NFL. And, and I think a big part of it, of him leaving Georgia State as well, um, there was a coaching change on the defensive line um, that, that may have led to that. He has made some comments as well, trying to find, you know, and establish a winning culture, you know, looking to a bigger program. And let's be honest, man, a, two, a former two-star recruit out of Tennessee getting an opportunity potentially to play up and play in the ACC. Why in the world would you not want that as a college athlete? I know I would um, certainly uh, to, to go and have that opportunity. And, uh, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, certainly the way the transfer portal is right now, group of five programs are, are losing some really good players. Yeah, the trans it's, it's interesting. The guys are constantly going up and down for whatever reason in terms of level of competition. Everybody wants that next step. As you touched on the NFL, um, certainly guys are looking to do that. Uh, ben, you touched on him as a recruit there uh, out of Brentwood, Tennessee. I, I'd like, for, again, I've, I've read his re, his background um, as a high school player, athlete. Uh, certainly seems like an interesting guy with with the sports he played. What do you remember about him? 2019 recruiting class, two stars you mentioned, 24 sports composite ranking. What do you remember about him then? And essentially, what has allowed him to be so productive? And to, uh, we touched on so much of the, the attributes, but maybe mentality-wise from what he had at Brentwood and, and then kind of moving forward to being a, pro a highly productive player. Yeah, just super impressive athlete. Uh, you know, talking to some of the coaches about him and, and specifically, you know, footwork, played basketball, played multiple sports there, offensive and defensive line, uh, uses hands extremely well, uh, really just kind of understood the mentality and, and really, you know, to, got a chance to talk to their former defensive line coach who's now at Tulane and, and just spoke specifically how high his football IQ was, really just knowing uh, what his role was, how to get other people involved. And he's not an overtly guy, you know, overtly loud guy, you know, wasn't a, wasn't a leader loud wise. Wise, um, just led with his play. And, and I think, um, you know, it was kind of a quiet leader for this defense. Um, it's very much a, was a bend, don't break in the last few years. But if just looking at some of the stats as well, was one of the, you know, the best defenses in America enforcing turnovers, uh, which every coach wants to do, right? You always want to say, hey, I want as many turnovers I can possibly get from the defensive side of the ball. And, and part of that as well, as we know, is, is just generating pressure up front and uh, from your defensive tackles and nose guards. And, and he was a big part of that for Georgia State last few years. 
Yeah, you touched on his basketball. Uh, Thomas is great to see that. A state champion wrestler, uh, shot put discus thrower. So, I mean, just just an all around impressive guy. Ben, I appreciate you taking the time to, to drop some knowledge on Thomas here. Definitely appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.